The FBI today shut down what it's calling the most sophisticated internet site in the business of selling hard drugs, including heroin, cocaine, and LSD. Ross Ulbrich went on trial today. The jury will decide a case that could impact the future of internet privacy. They called it an uncharged crime. Well, if something's a crime, don't you charge someone for it? And if it's not a crime, why is it there? We were in the courtroom, and we saw the uh, appalling um, obstruction of justice. This was the trial that didn't happen. The deep web is not a place. It's like looking under the hood of the internet. The deep web became inhabited by people of all types who wanted to use this terrain for privacy. Hundreds of thousands of users use the impossible to trace website which sells drugs, forged documents, and even hitmen. It's called the Silk Road. It generated roughly $1.2 billion in sales. February 5th, 2012, the Silk Road administrator made an announcement. Drum roll, please. My new name is Dread Pirate Roberts. This Dread Pirate Roberts, or DPR, was generally assumed to be the creator and owner of the site. I guess I shouldn't generally say this kind of thing, but I really liked the Dread Pirate Roberts that I interviewed. I thought he was, you know, uh, a really super interesting guy with a really coherent philosophy. What we're doing isn't about scoring drugs or sticking it to the man. It's about standing up for our rights as human beings and refusing to submit when we've done no wrong. The secretive dread pirate Roberts was arrested in the most unlikely of places, this local public library in this San Francisco neighborhood. Uh, all the drugs you could buy on the site, you, 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 it's not the same exciting as, as catching the guy. It's an adrenaline rush. FBI agent Tarbell and his cyber crime team had somehow located the Silk Road servers in Germany and Iceland. How these hidden servers were found has been a matter of controversy. It does raise these issues of can the government use essentially hacking techniques to dig up evidence on a criminal suspect? And if so, what kinds of warrant do they need? When the criminal complaint first appeared, it describes this 29-year-old kid named Ross Ulbricht. Not only do they say that he has run this billion-dollar-plus black market conspiracy, but then also there is outlined his plot to pay for the murders of a potential informant and a blackmailer. The clean-cut entrepreneur was living a secret life as a digital drug lord. Ulbricht tried to execute a murder for hire, offering $150,000 to a would-be hitman. What are you going to do over the next 20 years? I want to have had a substantial positive impact on the future of humanity by that time. It threw me for a loop. It was really not the Dread Pirate Roberts that I had ever imagined. Plenty of evidence suggests that he was involved in the Silk Road. They, after all, seized his laptop while he was logged in to the Silk Road. He was caught red-handed. But these two personalities, these two personas, do seem to be uh, almost schizophrenic. It's so difficult to imagine that they are the same person. Then when the indictment finally came out, there were suddenly no charges around these murder-for-hire accusations. It seemed like this bait-and-switch that the government had accused him in this almost informal way of murder so that when he was charged with these nonviolent crimes in the end, he would still be seen as a violent criminal. The trial of Silk Road mastermind Ross Ulbricht concluded when the jury found him guilty on seven different counts. Ulbricht faces a minimum of 30 years behind bars, but his defense plans to appeal this decision. Is that a fair trial? No, I don't think so. How's Ross through all of this? He's an amazing guy. You know, he's handling this so much better than I would have. And uh, we pray that uh, his spirit won't be crushed by this. Not a nice way to die, but it would be almost instantaneous. If I die in Mars, that will be great.